Okay, I'm getting ready to paint the name tag on the cat portrait. And I have already cut this piece out, which is blue, a dark blue, and I'm pre-mixed the color. So I will spray that in first. The lettering is going to go on later. There's lettering here. Okay. I see some pencil lines, so I'm going to knock that out of there real quick. Just clean it up a little bit. Try to show you everything that I go through, including annoying things like that. Okay. So we have the color in the color cup, it's a WADA SB, custom micron SB. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna flood this color on. It's got it does have some white in it. It is transparent mixed with white and some orange and some black. And the color is pretty dark. And that's what happens with transparents. They can get super dark especially if there's not much white in them. You can get, this can go almost like a black color. All right, so, very blue looking right now. That's not the color. You can see I can clean up around it very easily. Createx um, illustration colors. Okay, now a little drying with the air, and now I'm gonna go in I'm going to put in, I'm spraying kind of a wide spray from a distance, like you would paint a sky. Just gradate it in there. I'm kind of going circular over here. It's going to get pretty dark. And again, I can use the same color. The value is going to change because it's semi-transparent. And you can see here... Uh, Sometimes you can clean up with uh, Q-tips just so you can kind of see where you're going. This is all protected. The, the board is clay board. And uh, I decided to work on the collar and the chains and the different things here. So this will actually have a chrome outline. So the piece I took out is going to go back on. And I don't have to keep cleaning it right now, but I'm trying to just show you a little bit. Okay, I'm going to get I'm going to start getting this darker. And it's darker like really dark up here. So I'm going to play with the value. I'm not I'm not going to paint this just one flat color. I'm going to I'm just looking at the reference picture and I'm just going to kind of give it an overall Tint here. Look at it. Look at the real picture. I can make this a brighter blue if I want. I'm trying to get as close to the photograph. That's the liberty you can take with being an artist. If you want to brighten something up, if something's a little too dull looking. But this name tag is pretty dark. And I see a shadow. Well, right in this area, it's just a little bit dark. Okay, now I'm going to pass through again. Maybe not cover every little section. I'm going to go along the edge here, bouncing some paint off the frisket, creating a little shadow. It's a very, the, the chrome edge is pretty, pretty uh, thick, this chrome piece here. Really nice little tag. All right, so I've got a little shadow there. And I'm going to go a little more into the middle. Just looking at it. I'm pretty happy with that. Get it dark up in there. Now, I'm going to 
study this a little closer. And I think there's actually, look at the bigger one. And what I'm seeing, it almost looks like some dots are here. I'm just going to put them in. It can look like it's a little more interesting looking. Same color, just darker value. That's where the name's going to kind of go. Okay. One more pass there. Okay. So, next step. I'm not used to working flat. I'm trying to do this for the video. Um, over all the years of doing airbrushing, especially in the sign business is where I started. My neck <laughs> is um, very, uh, it's in pain in this position because of being squatting down, lettering trucks, airbrushing for hours. It's just the way. So I sit more upright and I have my easel this way now, but I'm trying different ways to figure out doing these videos. And right now, hopefully this will be the, the best way for you guys to see it. Okay. Now I want to take the piece I took out, which is right here. I put it on the end of the exacto and I just want to line that up. By the way, when you're cutting out frisket, you have to really you have to really cut it out exact to the best of your ability because if you cut it, cook it and you spray, even the slightest little thing, it will start looking like the crooked cut and it won't look good it will not so what I do is I I found a new way to cut it I'm getting older I got the eyesight getting messed up and I put it on my knees I sit back on a nice comfortable chair and I get the lighting right and I can tilt the board and I can see where I last cut and where where to continue and I can turn the board with this size painting and I can just kind of go around and get this to be exactly where I want it. Um, okay. That's not really lined up that great, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to push this in this way. I mean, if you took it out, it's going to go back in, but you have to really work on it. Certain things just need the help of a stencil. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'll find out the hard way. Now I'm gonna take out the outer. Yeah, it's offset a little bit. So let's just see what happens. Be very careful. I cut completely through so that I have no hangups um, as I go. Now as I speak, there is a hangup right there. So you just finish the cut. It's really just a, okay, this is not cut here either. So I'm gonna just slide through here. It might have been cut, but not deep enough. That's the other thing. You gotta change the blade a, a real lot. New blades, because uh, it's only this little tip that we're working with, the very fine, edge even for scratching and different things holding the blo the blade uh, if I was doing like whiskers or something fur I hold the blade very low and flat not like that because you can't control it but anyway so I'm gonna just try to get a little bit of the, the, the medium gray onto this surface and it's dirty got some pencil lines right in there now everything's shaking <laughs> all right all 
Okay. So, I'm going to... I've been using the Awada. Um, it's for overspray. I don't know what it's called, a pod or something. You can hear the airbrush when it gets rid of the paint or whatever. It makes a little different sound. And it really helps you with your breathing because it can get pretty bad. At my son's studio, I'll show you that on video one day, I have an, an airbrush desk that has ventilation all built in. I'm working at my home studio right now, and I only have a fan in the window, which I left off right now because I don't want the loud fan blocking the audio. Um, so I'm just cleaning the airbrush out. I don't have to get really, I use a little Q-tip. I don't have to get really fanatical here. If you want to wet the Q-tip, and then when you put it in there, it won't have all the fuzzies that could get stuck in there. So you got to be careful with that. All right, I'm just going to go to the pre-mixed gray. I'm mixing little cups that are like solo cups you can buy. They have snap-on lids. And let's see if I can get a little sculpting going on. Okay, I can test on here. Change it from the blue to the gray. Now, if I spray this lightly, even if I spray black, I would have the control of spraying a little bit at a time so I can... But I chose to go with like a, a gray tone. I'm just going to kind of hit the edges here. It's going to go back and forth a little bit. So I'm spraying mostly on the film. Going with the shape. And I am looking at the reference picture, which is off to the side right now. I have a very large printout and I have other sizes too. Um, okay, I see something here that could be helpful for you guys. This is a post note and I need a quick stencil, quick little sticky. And I bought the extra sticky one because the black on here kind of has a little straight edge right, right about there. And it's really nice. It won't blow away. It's got some really good stick to it. And I want to just kind of spray in there. Again, you got to look at your reference picture a lot because, you know, we are spraying. We're not using a paintbrush here. And too long on the trigger. And you can end up having the paint go where you don't want it because you're not looking at what's going on in the reference picture. Okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, I guess that is on an angle, but... Okay, that works. Now, I see a little, this is kind of the stroke I'm going to do here. It's kind of like a, a feather stroke, a dagger stroke that's soft. I'm going to do a small one. I can turn the air down. I have a Mac valve. I can turn the air down here. And I don't necessarily know what air pressure that is exactly. I know it's under 30. It doesn't matter to me. It's more of a feel because I'll, I'll even put this up to higher, you know, sometimes very high air pressure if I want to move the thicker paint, wicked paints. Depends. It's just, it's a lot of feel. Okay. So now I'm going to go in here and hit some real dark, mostly on the frisket because I'm trying to create a roundness. You know, let me zoom in on this a little bit. Okay, I'll back off a smidge. Let's go with, I guess that, that will be good. All right, right over here, right in the center, there's going to be a dark hit. Right there, it's really dark too. I'll, I'll go over it a couple times. But oh yeah, you got to go after that tip dry a lot, especially with the Micron, you know, I mean... A lot. Okay. So now, and I do have the mixture with some reducer in it that helped the paint flow better. 
if I sprayed this black right out of the bottle, I might end up having a little bit of a problem with uh, speckly, kind of like. Okay, now I want to go really just, you know, it's, it's overspray. And overspray, when you're doing like micro airbrushing like this, the, little, the littlest bit goes there, and, and, and it's there, even though we can't see it. And that's all you might want looking at the photograph. You might just want the smallest, just a little hit on the edge. Because when I peel up everything, you're going to start seeing the, th the third dimension to it. This is darker and rounder. So right here, it gets real black. I'm going to go, I kind of make a dot where I am. So I'm going to walk it right there, following the shape, around that off a little more. It's very dark right there blackish okay and now I'm gonna darken that I'm not putting the back this post note back on there I don't have to because that's pretty dark there um, it gets real dark in this area again there's where I am so I'm trying to find myself sometimes you can use a little pump stroke where your finger is going like that that allows you to do some things that are for real fine detailing. Um, okay. So we're cleaning it up a little bit and you get a feel for the three dimension. And I'm trying to create chrome. That's what I'm doing here. All right, so now the top area is just dust over it, leaving the darker area. Now you have two tones of the metal and I see a little there's gonna be a nice white highlight right there but right now and I'll probably use the white of the board most likely so I'll work around this so it's gonna be like well, let me get a little piece of paper to bounce some paint off of all right so I want to make where am I all right so I need this kind of a shape right probably right here okay it's not a real big area, so I'm going to kind of bounce the paint off the paper. Easier said than done, especially in this position for me. I'm not liking this position uh, of being straight down, but I'll figure out my videos as I go. I'm just new to YouTube. Um, new to filming this stuff and like when I when I made my sign business with my wife <laughs> you just you just put it together and you do the best you can and you learn as you go on the job training lettering a boat out in the boat yard with the airbrush on a rainy day ah nothing like it <laughs> nothing like it Back in the days of the one-shot paint, which is making a comeback, um, it starts raining, the big storm clouds come in, you're trying to paint a marlin on the back of a, a yacht, a boat, a fishing boat, and uh, so I'll, I'll tell you what though, that was a great, great business, I don't have it anymore, but it was really quite a business fun going out lettering a boat airbrushing graphics on it taking a job that might be normally 200 to 300 dollars and airbrushing it and turning it into a seven eight and even a thousand dollar job because of the airbrush it's all it always made more money People pay more for custom stuff. Now I'm going to create a line. Again, that tip dry. Okay, I'm going to create a line. I'm going to go right through here. Because in the metal, you get all kinds of neat things happening. And right here, I started this. Let's see. This is gray here. I'm going to put a gray tone right there. And then 
Now this might be a little bit of controlling it with bouncing. I have to find the right shape. I just cut out the paper, make some shapes that I like because in all honesty, the paper is nice because it's so absorbent. It's not like a plastic shield that gives you um, splashback. I'm going to be erasing a little bit. My highlight is right in there. Okay, now i got to see what gray tones are going on here. This is real dark here, so I'm going to come back in. Takes time. you got to get that very nice, round kind of shape that creates this edge to look good. Okay, let's see. Over here, I'm going to come this way. That's the other thing. You're, when you don't do the tip dry, your shape, you should have a little microscopic dot like that, okay, or bigger. It should be round, especially with the t-shirt paints and we're using high pressure. If your dot's not round, it means you have tip dry on your needle and it needs to get taken care of. All right. Frisk gets blown up a little. The nice thing is too that this clay board that I'm working on is very, you know, I used to work on the illustration board. This is tough stuff. This is smooth. It's like a formica. It's it's even smoother. It's it can receive your aggressive eraser. It can receive your X-Acto knife, and of course. Uh, all types of different erasers. I use kneaded erasers, whatever. You're trying to keep it airbrushed looking. So it, sometimes when you're airbrushing, I mean, it's like with drawing, you know, I tell people when they take drawing lessons that you got to um, think about the eraser taking away. It's like subtracting, taking away paint or taking away graphite. Same thing with the airbrush. There's adding and there's subtracting, taking away. And again, now I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to darken this again, right here. And I see some noise over here. I call it noise. I'm going to try this one freehand. Just put a little... And then the gray tone, farther away. Just tint it down, and there is a darkness here too, just on the edge. You know, if this was real big, gigantic size, then it would be very easy to paint because the smaller stuff is a challenge, um, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to make this, I'll bounce it off this part. I won't make it all the same. I really enjoy like doing t-shirts and stuff and a lot of loose masks and freehand shields. Uh, I'll use that as much as I can then to do the frisket cutting, but some things just cry out for it. Can't get around it. All right. So let's see what we got so far. I'm going to take the Q-tip and I'm going to come in here and see how nice it comes off the frisket. I'm using a I think it's art tool. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it's art tool. It's a satin finish. I always recommend that. The the shiny one, uh, it gives me a lot of trouble. You cleaning it, it doesn't let go of the paint. I mean, this I'm going right on to the work here. I'm crashing right on to the actual um, whatever this thing is called, um, dog tag or whatever. Okay, so you can kind of see where I'm going with this, cleaning it up a little. You know, um, I'll zoom in a little. Move this over, and you can kind of, I'll bring it up. I think the focus might change a little. Here we go. Now, I'll be showing this later. Um, 
I'll probably be doing some of the white and some of the uh, actual, you know, without the camera on, I can go in and really start to work because um, I can work tighter and closer and pay attention to all the little super details. But, you know, like going back in here, by the way, this is a Tombow. It's a, it's a it's Mono Zero um, Tombow. It, it's a plastic eraser and it's like a pen you know you can make it come out or you can push it back in and start it over and you get really nice you can erase on i always clean it on paper not on you know because it won't clean up but if i want to make a sharp edge i can take the exacto knife this is what i do and i can cut this piece off and i'll do this on here just this one time here now I have it brand new, and so when I pull it out, I'll have an edge. So if I want to do like fur and start, you know, I'll get it. I'll get a nice line through um, through the through the artwork. I'll try to do it in this blue area, so you can get like lines. And if you press later, you can get really fine one. So while it's still got the edge, but for right now, I'm trying to just clean up. The, the super highlight areas, there's going to be one right here. And you can see I'm going back down to the white of the board. If you can get away with not using the white paint, I find that this really looks nice when I go back and forth and uh, use the white of the board as much as I can. Going right here. And all, all it is is just mimicking what you see realism you know is is just that i see a darker area right here i'm gonna i'm gonna put it in i'm gonna go around here and i want to bounce some paint right actually i want to do a little little line more i started it before so let's see It's kind of like lock and load and get that shape and go for it. So what I'm trying to do on there is I'm trying to do this shape, but I'm locked into a curve. My hand naturally wants to go into this curve shape and uh, it works with drawing. When you take a pencil, let's see, can you see it over here? And you can just kind of lock your hand in position and you can pull some really nice lines that are all going in the same direction like that because your hand it's a natural curve so there's a little sample of some drawing uh all right so i think this video is a wrap <laughs> i'm going to uh i'm not going to be able to take all the frisket off to show you it really clean because i've got other pieces to do here the frisket is right here under this um, white tape it's right here. This is protected just so the overspray don't bounce all over. I'm not worried about up here by the cat's face because it's not close enough really. I'm, I'm good there. And uh, yeah, so there it is. I hope you guys got something out of this. I'm starting to really enjoy. Um, I'm a teacher anyway. I have airbrush school. I have, you know, drawing, watercoloring, acrylics. This is my forte. This is what I love. And uh, I've gone to school for it. I, I've trained under some of the most unbelievable artists out there. And I'll name a few. Uh, Drew Blair, especially being one of my, my favorite, actually, because of photorealism. Uh, phenomenal school. I always will tell you about his school. If you ever get a chance to go to it down in Blair, South Carolina, don't hesitate. You won't regret it. You will not regret it. But I've gone to a lot of seminars and 